Today, we're finally gonna get rid of that pesky cyanobacteria. What's going on, Reef Dudes and Dudettes? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now, th I've had these little bits of green desting of cyan on my sand bed for like six months now. I'm trying to find natural ways to get rid of it, and it kind of goes away and comes back, and it's been plaguing me forever. So today, we are finally gonna deal with it and get rid of it. Um, I have to give credit to Mark from Mila's Reef for this one, because he's kind of hassling me about I should not have cyan on my tank. And it's been such a small amount, it's been pretty subtle that I haven't really worried about it. Um, it's not like the red mat that coats stuff, it's literally just that little bit of green dusting. So today, I finally broke down, and I'm going to try ChemiClean. Now this stuff, it says red slime remover. My stuff's green, but really it can be green, blue algae, red slime, slime algae. It's all kinds of different names it goes by, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, the color really depends on which type of nutrients or stuff's in the water, which kind of colors and pigments it takes up. kind of see, I've kind of let it build back up a little bit for this video. It really was my main motivation to do a mini water change once in a while. But that half of the tank, not too bad. This half, I got bits of it just on my sand bed. It's not like a thick mat. If I like brush my finger, it kind of dusts off. It's very light. Now, a good chunk of this could be because there's a lack of flow on that side of the tank. But I, I kind of on the fence on this theory because yes, that is my far peninsula end of the tank, so there is less flow. However, in the past, I've also had some of the stuff matting a little bit up over here, which is right in front of the MP40s and the gyre so all that flow was blasting at it and there was still some in that little area so that was getting completely blasted still there so i'm really on the fence on that theory now 24 48 36 hours type of deal so after you do the treatment you do want to do a water change after so i've started mixing up a big brute container of salt and this guy is probably i'm going to say about 35 gallons i'm just letting it slowly mix and heat up so in a day or two when i do that large water change we'll be able to deal with it that's probably going to be the biggest water change I've done in ages, so I'm sure the tank will appreciate it. And it'll be nice to finally have a bright white sand bed again. So the instructions say to add one drop per gallon. So in my case, there's probably around 100, 120 gallons. So we can sit here for a while and count drops. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But I've also heard that the lid is approximately 50 drops. So two capfuls should be able to do it. But first, before we actually dose the tank with this, there's a couple things we gotta do first. Now before we dose ChemiClean to the tank, a couple things we wanna do. One, if you have ozone or UV sterilizer, any of that stuff you wanna turn it off. Um, same with the carbon and GFO. So I'm gonna turn off my carbon and my GFO. And, cause you don't want any of these kind of medias messing with the ChemiClean, or you don't want it absorbing any of that type of stuff. Or otherwise, it's not gonna be nearly as effective as it could be. Uh, we're also gonna take our skimmer offline, partially. Now the skimmer could potentially A, remove the treatment that we're putting in the water and B, it will likely go crazy and overflow. So I'm gonna leave my skimmer on, but I'm gonna take the cup off. Now the ChemiClean oxidizes the cyano. So it's gonna absorb a lot of oxygen out of the water. And when that happens, we need to make sure we have oxygen going back in. So you can point your power heads more towards the surface and have more surface ripple. You can add an air stone to the tank. So I do have an air stone down there for bubbling. So I'll probably just turn that on and leave that on 24 hours for the next day or two. And we're gonna take off the skimmer cup and we're just gonna let it overflow. So that's gonna provide a ton of aeration and it should keep everything happy. Now, one other note, actually, one of my buddies pointed out, if you're dosing amino acids or an acropower, you also wanna turn that off for the next couple of days because that can potentially feed the sound of bacteria that you're trying to get rid of. Now, just the starter is gonna unplug my neck cleaner. This will also double as a great excuse to clean that skimmer head. Whoa, there we go. All right, now look at all that extra aeration. So with that skimmer head off, we're providing a ton of aeration. You can just see those bubbles overflowing like crazy. So this is gonna go a long way and this will probably make a huge difference to make sure the tank's properly aerated during this process. There's no starvation or lack of oxygen in the tank. So we got our carbon off, our GFO off. Um, I also have ozone, so we'll turn that off next. And now we'll put our drops in and treat the tank. And we are gonna do two capfuls just because we don't wanna stand here for a half an hour counting 100 drops. So here's one capful. And I'm just gonna disperse it in a bit of a high flow area in the tank. And one more. All right, so there is two capfuls. That should be approximately 100 drops plus the 10 or so I put in earlier. Now we 
pretty much just hurry up and wait. All right, so we added our drops. Now it just wants us to wait 48 hours and it says repeat if necessary and you must do a 20% water change after each dose. So after each treatment. So in here we got our 35 gallons of water and that's gonna be a nice big water change that we're gonna do in 48 hours from now. So now I guess we'll check back with you guys tomorrow the next day and we'll see how it works. All right guys, so it's been about 24, 26 hours now. Definitely starting to see a reduction in the green sign on the sand bed. Um, it's a lot more sparse than more kind of covered. So I'm really curious to see if there's any more changes in the next 24 hours. So now tomorrow night, I'll do another water change. But for now, you guys can kind of see relative to yesterday what I just had, it was a lot more covered. So now it's a lot more sparse on the sand bed. So that's great to see. So it's definitely starting to work after just 24 hours. There wasn't really much red sign. I was pretty much just the green stuff. So that's doing a big chunk. And as you can see down below, the skimmer is still going crazy, being a bubbling machine. Um, so tons of aeration. So at least that's not really a worry in the system. So we will check back tomorrow and see how things are looking. All right, guys, we're now at the 48 hour mark. Huge reduction on the sand bed. The sand is looking much cleaner. Uh, there's still little tiny bits of it. So let me quickly show you. So we still have little little bits here and there, but look at that. It used to be huge chunks of green, and now it's just like little speckles on the edges of some of the sand granules. Look on this side of the tank, like that part's pretty much cleared up. So it's really just, you know, this was the worst chunk, obviously. But there's a lot of it that is now gone, so a little bit. So yeah, we're at 24 hours. Um, as you can see, the skimmer is still going crazy, making sure I got t ridiculous amounts of aeration in the sump, uh, just to make sure the fish are all nice and happy because it does take away your oxygen as this works. So now it's almost gone, but not 100%. So what we're going to do is wait one more day. So we're going to wait to the 36 hour mark. And this one's actually per Mark's recommendation. And then we'll do our water change tomorrow and we'll see how the tank looks. So we're now at the 36 hour mark. The sand bed is looking absolutely clean and fabulous. There's still the foam party going on in the sump and there's been no negative effects that I've noticed on the tank, which is absolutely awesome. So now we're gonna do our big water change. So I've had water heating and mixing in the brood container for the last couple days. There's about 30-ish gallons in here. So that's gonna be what I'm gonna do for my big water change. I have my super ghetto DIY water change hose since I couldn't find the actual one. So I'm gonna use a bit of an excuse to clean the sand bed a bit and a few other things. And yeah, so let's do this water change and get this treatment finished off. Now, when I normally do water change on the tank, I only do about five gallons at a time. I don't really bother heating it. It's not a really big issue. But doing 30 gallons is gonna have a much bigger impact and could potentially do a little bit of a swing. So I do have a heater in there. I make sure it's temperature is the right temperature. Check it with the tank. Um, as for that, also make sure your salinity is spot on. You don't wanna do anything that's gonna cause a big swing and upset your tank. So if you have a refractor meter, use it and make sure you calibrate it. If you haven't calibrated in a while, if you drop this, smack it, whatever, it's going to throw off your calibration. So it's always a good idea to recalibrate it fairly frequently. Look at all the junk that is pulling out. This little quick, quick and dirty DIY siphon is doing an awesome job. I might just have to keep this one around. I am so happy to have a nice white pristine sand bed again. Why I waited six months to do this, I have no idea, but I'm happy that I finally did. So Mark, thanks for kicking my butt and making me do it. Now, aside from that, guys, um, zero negative impacts. I mean, the tank is happy. I've noticed no impact on any of the corals. Um, I did a recommended water change, except I waited 36 hours rather than 24 hours, and it seemed to have done the trick. Now, if you guys are fighting the battle against getting that pristine white sand bed back, um, you want to pick up some Chem and Clean, uh, check out my links below. I got Amazon and Marine Depot. Using either one of those links are going to help support the channel, so always appreciated. So, guys, definitely zero negative impact one happy tank. So thumbs up to ChemiClean. Now, if you guys learned something, if you like this, smash that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. And now let's check out the tank and I'll see you guys in the next video.